Kind of Johnny. Welcome to live stream Q and A. Subscribe to Q and A. How are you doing? Hi, former anomaly. Great, the room's filling up quite nicely. Uh, now, who have we here? Virginia Creeper. I'm not very familiar with that, uh, uh, Phobos. Uh, sounds like an outdoor creeper. If it's a creeper which normally grows outside, then it has to um, be kept outside. The outdoor uh, plants and trees won't survive indoors. Good, Johnny. Good to hear. You good? Now, Harry Look, Barry, right. Uh, I have a Chinese elm. Any tips for anyone? Someone new to bonsai? I have, I have a Chinese elm. Any tips for someone new to bonsai? Yes, Barry. Um, where, where do you keep it? Right, Johnny, I'll come back to the Satsuki Azealia in a minute. Let me deal with uh, Barry's question about the uh, Chinese elm. Barry, where do you keep the Chinese elm? Is that kept uh, indoors or do you keep it outside? Right, in, in that case, Barry, what you need to do is uh, keep it... Um, and, and where do you live? Uh, 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 and how hot is it? Outdoors. Barry, that's, uh, that's uh, that question's for you. It would help me to know where, where, where in the world you are, because I'm in the UK, so I'm... Oh, Ireland, right, okay, it's no different from England. So uh, what you need to do is, if you can put it on a south or uh, uh, southeast facing window, or even southwest, southeast, south or southwest facing window, and on a windowsill, uh, it will do very well. And also, um, be careful with the watering. People tend to either overwater or underwater. If you underwater, your tree will die very quickly. If you overwater, it will die very, very slowly. It can take up to six months for the tree to die. And uh, you should be feeding it between now, from April through to end of September. And you can either use the uh, uh, solid pallets which you place around the pot and every time you water um, the fertilizer will, will dissolve and a uh, little bit of it will go into the soil and to the roots eventually and either that or you can use liquid uh, fertilizer and you use it uh, once say you use the liquid fertilizer once a week uh, I've just realized, I was looking at the other computer where the uh, feed is and uh, this Mac is where the camera is, so if I look away, I am checking the uh, uh, feed uh, where, where, where your questions are and uh, so that's what's going on here. Uh, so that's uh, the Ch Chinese elm. That's, uh, I hope that's helpful, yeah, Barry. and. Uh, Coming to Johnny, uh, you, you've got a Satsuki Azealia. Now, uh, has started looking a bit yellow. Uh, now, that could be a number of things. It's a uh, uh, watering issue, it's uh, uh, not feeding it enough. Uh, they like to be in full sun. So, where, where, where are you keeping it, Johnny?
Now, John, you say, Jeffrey, you, you asked me to elaborate on azaleas. Now, they, they are not difficult to look after. Uh, they, they like full sun, and uh, uh, also they, they should be watered regularly. I mean, I've got quite a few, and I water mine um, in summer twice, um, at the height of the summer, but otherwise just once in the evening. And uh, then I feed them from uh, April through, through to end of uh, September, middle of October. And I've got various feeds. I've got uh, uh, Kempak, which is C-H-E-M-P-A-K, balanced feed, 10, 10, 10. Or if you can't get uh, 10, 10, 10, get a higher number, 20, 20, 20, or 30, 30, 30 and dilute it down to um, 10, 10, 10. In other words, you, if, if you have 20, 20, 20, you use double the amount of water or you reduce the uh, quantity to half and keep the same amount of water. That's how you dilute it down. And the other thing, the other fertilizer that I use is seaweed, a liquid seaweed which has to be dissolved. And uh, uh, the best one is very cheap and it's a uh, chicken pellets the, this is uh, that's processed chicken shit and uh, but that's the best I have a friend uh, his trees always win uh, in shows and uh, at the club uh, evenings and uh, he was we were in discussion uh, a couple of years ago and he said oh you people have too much money uh, spending it on, on these fancy uh, fertilizers and he said I use uh, chicken pellets and that really did it for me. Now let's have a look what else uh, I'm being asked. Uh, right, there isn't anything else so please ask away. This is a subscribers Q&A and if any of you are not subscribers then consider subscribing because this is a great channel and you'll learn an awful lot about uh, bonsai and uh, the tree that you see in, the tree that you see in the back over there uh, or yeah there that that, that 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 one is a is a maple Japanese maple and I've brought it in for the evening and uh, every time I have a live stream, I intend to have a different tree in the background, but for today I brought in a Japanese maple. Now, anyone else has any other questions? Jeffrey, is that, uh, you're saying the foliage is getting less and less. Uh, I presume that's on your azalea. I think what you need to do is uh, improve the watering because the uh, it's not enough water under watering. The first thing that the trees do is uh, start shedding leaves. So it sounds like a case of under watering. And uh, uh, w w where in the world are you, Jeffrey? Um, are you in the UK, Europe, Holland? And if the weather is similar to here in the UK, uh, on the continent um, in Europe, I suspect it's warmer than here and you should be watering a bit more. The other thing which is very important is to make sure that the tree uh, uh, is repotted in a, uh, using um, a good quality bonsai soil mix so that the drainage is very, very good, that the water drains through so sort of fairly quickly. Let me have a look at, uh, right, you, Jeffrey hasn't told me where he is, so I'm assuming from the name is Jeffrey Van Wiesig, I suspect. Oh, the Netherlands, right, I was right, uh, Jeffrey. So basically, I think what you need to do is uh, sort the watering out. And uh, when was this uh, azalea last repotted? Because it could be that it needs repotting, uh, in which case uh, you, you'd be better off repotting it. Uh, although people say it should only be done in March, 
I tend to read part throughout the year, and uh, uh, it needs, if you read part after March, it needs extra care and attention uh, after reporting for the next two weeks. Uh, what I tend to do is I place the tree in complete shade and don't feed it because I would have cut at least 30 to 40 percent of the roots and uh, so for two weeks it's out of the sun so the leaves don't put too much pressure on the roots uh, for, uh, for water to be sent up and uh, also I don't feed because the roots have been cut and if they come into uh, in, directly in contact with fertilizer which is very very harsh and that can do more damage. So Jeffrey, I think, can you tell me when it was last reported? Because I, uh, uh, I don't have that information. Right, in fact, uh, Jeffrey, you asked about the this Italian who's got a, who was making chili uh, bonsai. Mm -hmm. Uh, when he was making chili bonsai, he didn't have a YouTube channel, uh, but I met him a few weeks ago at the YouTube Space Studios in, in London, King's Cross. And uh, he has since meeting me, started making, a, making videos, and you can contact him. His channel name is XEXIV, and uh, I've got his card. This is his channel. Uh, this is the Italian who makes, uh, uh, who, who, who was uh, uh, involved with making of the chili pepper bonsai, and the other side of the card is that. So you should be able to contact him and uh, give him my name and uh, say that you've heard about his uh, chili pepper bonsai, and uh, he should be able to uh, help you out. I hope you've got that information. Now, what else is coming in? Uh, Jeffrey, I notice this with my garden. Azaleas mainly, that's why I am intimidated. I, uh, Jeffrey, I'm sorry, I, I, I don't quite get it. Uh, I notice this with my garden. Azaleas mainly, that's why I'm intimidated. I, 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 I'm sorry, I, I didn't get the what, what you're saying, Jeffrey. It's uh, is it that you have only azaleas, or is it uh, or the, uh, the other plants are okay, and it's just the azaleas which are causing a problem? For most that anomaly, that's great. Yeah, do check him out and let me know how you get on, and I will also send him a message to say that uh, you'll be contacting him. Now, how do you pronounce this? Uh, Dionysios? Uh, am I pronouncing it right? Uh, yeah, great to have you here. And Dionys, this is a subscriber's Q&A. So, uh, fire away if you have any questions. For a small, just heavily pruned privet. Ah. Uh, privates are very, very forgiving. I have quite a few of these at various stages of development. And even if you prune it heavily, uh, they bounce back very quick, they grow very fast, and within five, six weeks you will have plenty of growth. And what you need to do with uh, a, a Pravis... Oh, right, Dennis. Okay, thanks, Dennis. Uh, Dennis, what you need to do with Pravits is... Um, let them grow, let the branches get tall, and, and then you cut them right back. That way you'll end up with small, small, thick branches. But if you prune them while they're still very young, the, what you'll be left with will be very thin branches. Southeast, yes, Danny, southeast windowsill is okay, but that's for the, uh, for the, uh, indoor trees, um, and I'm assuming you also have some indoor trees. Privates are outdoors, but if you have indoor trees like Chinese elms, um, 
uh, Chinese uh, so sweet plum, um, Fukan tea tree, ficus. So yeah, these would be okay on the southeast uh, window. That is, if you're in London, how come you haven't popped down to see me? Come along and we'll, we'll, we'll feature you in one of the videos. <laughs> and bring a tree or two, one or two trees with you, so we can feature them in the, in the videos. But let me, I'm going to switch screens and... Uh, see who we have here. Right, back with you guys. Yep, that is, I thought so. Right, Dennis, you're very welcome. And uh, yeah, it'd be a pleasure because I want to work with people, I want to feature people uh, in the videos and show everyone uh, that how uh, people are getting on with their with, with their trees. It'd be a great idea. Maples, oh, Jeffrey, you you wanted uh, oh uh, the uh, uh, tree that we have. Um, where, where is it? It's over there. That one. That's a maple. You're looking at the maple. My fingers look virtually touching it. That's a maple, and I brought it in uh, just for this live feed, a uh, live stream, and. After the stream, it's going uh, straight out again. And my intention is to have a different bonsai tree in every live stream. So you'll be seeing different trees uh, at the back uh, at each live stream. Excuse me, I'm getting a bit thirsty. Thank you, Jeffrey. Uh, now we've got uh, Flat Earth uh, Revelations, in the pursuit for legitimate truth, one must stick to facts, not opinion. For your information, every simple experiment conducted to prove our Earth is moving or current has failed till this day in human history. Right, Flat Earth, I don't know what you are trying to say. This is a bonsai of uh, Q&A. And your comment, um, I can't quite relate it to bonsai. Can you be more direct and specific? I am not a scientist, Flat Earth. Um, you are wasting your time addressing that question to me. Uh, I can't answer that, and it, and this is not the place for. Uh, science. This is not a science question and answer. This is a bonsai Q and A. So uh, I, I'm going to have to pass on that one. Uh, if you have a, a question uh, related to bonsai, I'll be very happy to um, sort of um, help you with that. Uh, but other than that, I'm going to follow. Jeffrey's uh, uh, suggestion and just uh, not bother uh, commenting on your comment unless it's uh, specific to bonsai. Do I own any Japanese bonsai display? Um, and that's Jeffrey's question. Ah, tables. Yes, I, I do have them, but they're not here. What I will do, Jeffrey, is uh, I will bring them in into uh, uh, my study. This is my study where I've uh, uh, made it into a studio. So everything's out and now there's just some lights, computers and stuff like that. So I will bring those in and uh, uh, I will br I'll bring the uh, tables in. Uh, they, they really are lovely. Uh, and uh, yeah, I have three of those and then I also have some flat ones. Uh, and a circular one. Oh, I've got quite a few actually, about maybe six or seven. And I will have them in here, uh, perhaps maybe during the week one day, again in the evening, this sort of time, or perhaps a little earlier. And I will show, share with you 
the uh, I'll show you the tables, the display tables, and uh, the flat plinths, and also there's a round one uh, which I brought back from from China. So I'll share those with you, and uh, you can see how lovely they are. And uh, flat earth. Whilst I appreciate your politeness and courtesy, I simply don't have the knowledge. So how do you expect me to, to provide you the answer? Thank you, Jeffrey. Yes, they are rather nice. And uh, as I said, I will share those with you in the next uh, day or so. Right, folks. Uh, 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 please do ask because uh, unless you ask questions, I will dry. I, I will dry up. Uh, while we are waiting for questions, I will talk about uh, the origins of bonsai. What is bonsai? Uh, it's a originated in China, and. Uh, uh, in all the old pictures and paintings of the uh, emperor's palaces, you see these little trees in little pots uh, and on little tables, just like the one you see in the background. If I move out of the way, you'll be able to see it now. That's an old um, sort of, uh, uh, table from the, uh, I think, around 40s or 1950s. And, but they had obviously uh, uh, we're going back thousands of years, and they had tables just like uh, like that one. And uh, uh, on the tables would be these bonsai pots and bonsai trees. And the Chinese monks, the Buddhist monks, would travel uh, with uh, 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 trees and plants in pots. And these would be for medicinal and herbal purposes. And that's what they used to do. Um, uh, Barry, I'll come back to you shortly. Let, let me finish explaining uh, what I started. And so these monks used to travel around with these pots with uh, plants in them. And uh, about 700 odd years ago, the Japanese took the art from China to Japan. And uh, uh, also in China, the uh, bonsai was called Penjing, and Penjing is like a landscape. And what they were doing is they were taking these big plinths, and on that they were replicating their landscape. And China is so vast and has some beautiful sceneries, mountains, lakes, rivers, and People could not afford to travel uh, in, 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 in such a long time ago, and even the rich, what they did, they replicated the landscape on these little trays. And in Japan, the land is not, they are limited for land, and uh, so the Japanese, uh, instead of having a landscape, they started having just the trees in pots. and. On my uh, recent trip to Japan, I saw how pushed they are for space. And even now, a lot of the houses have 10, 12 bonsai trees, and they do not take up much room. And uh, the other aspect which is noteworthy is the uh, Cultural Revolution. In 1949, the communists, they pushed the nationalists out. And what the nationalists did, they jumped in their boats and took whatever they could and went to Taiwan. And the nationalists left them alone. And in China, when uh, once Mao became uh, in charge and in control, uh, all the rich, wealthy, and intellectuals were banished from the cities and sent to the countryside to be re-educated, as they called them, but essentially they were made to work on farms, and they were calling it re-education. And bonsai was re regarded as a rich man's uh, pastime and a rich man's um, hobby, and also the intellectuals. And these people were then banned from growing bonsai. 
and the farmers in the countryside very quickly picked up uh, from these city folks the art of uh, growing and maintaining bonsai and the communists they turned a blind eye and so we've ended up with two very different styles of bonsai from 1949 till about late 70s uh, China was completely cut out in fact Mao threw all the foreigners out and China was closed for business so that's in a nutshell the history of uh, bonsai and how did the bonsais come to the west uh, during second world war a lot of the Americans forces based in Japan uh, came across these trees and when they were returning to America they a lot of them brought, took back with them little bonsai trees and that was a start of uh, importation of bonsai trees from Japan to uh, America and that is another reason why the Americans follow the Japanese way of making bonsai and uh, so forth. Right, so that takes care of the uh, uh, little bit of background. There's a little bit more, but I think I'd leave it at that and we'll continue in another live stream. So in the meantime, I'll have a quick look to see what questions have been coming in. Um, Oh, flat earth, yet a life. Um, Dennis, the, you, you're on the right track with Barry's question as to tips on watering. Now, firstly, Barry, uh, what sort of pot is your tree in? Is it a blue uh, rectangular pot? And what sort of soil is it? Uh, is it... Uh, like garden soil, is it uh, like clay, uh, uh, or is it proper bonsai soil? Uh, what sort of, uh, a lot of the Chinese elves which are imported into Europe and U uh, UK and America are sold by nurseries without repotting. They're very, very naughty. The soil which these uh, Chinese elves come in is the farmyard soil with a little bit of sand thrown in for good measure. And the trees have been in the same pot for over three, nearly three, four years. And if you take the tree out, you will see it completely root bound. And the trees need repotting. And the classic sign is that the if you look at the bottom, there won't be any wire mesh and there won't be any anchor wires. And so that's the first thing you need to sort out, Barry, it to sort the soil out, to sort the roots out. And once you've got proper bonsai soil mix, then watering is not an issue because the soil is quick draining. When you water it from the top, you keep watering until the water runs clear and it will drain very, very quickly. And if you keep it at, at an angle, let's say if this was your pot, and if this was your pot, if this was your pot, instead of keeping it uh, level, you put something underneath so it's, it's at an angle and then with gravity it will drain faster and then you can't over or under water it. Oh hi Alan, um, yeah uh, thanks for joining us. Right, Japanese white pines, great, I, I have quite a few of those now. Uh, Alan's question is uh, uh, I have three shogun Japanese white pine. The needles on s two of them have start started turning yellow and no candles. Now, right, Alan, you are in Dublin, so the weather is very similar to here in London. Now, the candles on Japanese white pines uh, they will turn yellow and that's the previous year's growth. Normally they turn yellow around the autumn time, uh, October, November, and sometimes people leave them on and uh, 
In fact, I recently took some off of one of my pine, white pines. And what you should do is remove the dead needles. These are the needles from the previous year's growth. Uh, did you remove any needles uh, in last uh, October, November, December? Let's see. Uh, that's for uh, you, Alan. Uh, did you remove any candles last year? Now, C. Um, Buckthorn, is that uh, Jordan? Is that C. Buckthorn or Blackthorn? I'm not familiar with Buckthorn, but Blackthorn, yes, uh, I am familiar with that. In fact, I, I have one of them. I have a Blackthorn, but I'm not familiar with Buckthorn. There are so many species. Is uh, I have over 350 trees, but I don't have every species under the sun. Uh, I, I, I have quite a lot, but uh, no one can have uh, each and every one. Uh, and even the very big nurseries, uh, even they don't have. There are trees I have that big nurseries don't. But that's the way it, that's the way it, it works. Edmundo. Hello Edmundo. Uh, you're welcome to this live stream. Uh, we are talk. Uh, uh, this is uh, basically a live stream for uh, subscribers' uh, questions and answers. Now, when you say any tips for a beginner, uh, uh, it depends where you are. But the easiest thing that you can do is uh, the more trees you work on, get cheap and cheerful material, and as much as you can, and keep practicing, keep working. You'll make mistakes, you'll kill the odd tree, but that's okay. That's the price we pay for learning to bonsai. And uh, a few trees have died in my care, but fortunately not too many. And that happens to the best of us. So that's the first tip, is uh, uh, get as much cheap material as you can. Also, if you can collect materials such as privates, how about the uh, honeysuckle, the Japanese honeysuckle? I'm trying to think of the uh, local, yes, no, Nisra is another one, uh, and uh, a private um, for Scythia. And th th there's a lot of material that you can collect hawthorn, blackthorn, and uh, again, pines, junipers. But for beginners, stay away from pines and junipers. Uh, it's hard work and uh, cut your teeth on uh, deciduous trees and if you do go collecting, make sure that you have the landowner's permission to collect the trees. And in fact, you've uh, missed the season. The collecting uh, season is up uh, over the winter months up to the end of March. And uh, the trees then have a good chance of surviving. But before you go collecting, watch some videos on uh, uh, what to how to, what to do how to do. There is a very good uh, uh, YouTube bonsai channel. Channel uh, is run by a, an American. He lives in America, and it's Appalachian. A P P A L A C H A I N bonsai. Appalachian bonsai, and. All he does is collected material and he makes bonsais out of them. So that's a very good channel and he's got tips and hints on how to collect and what to do. So uh, let me see. Just bear with me. I'm going to uh, sort of try and pick up uh, four percent of Tell me please, are there any leaves that lose their leaves in winter but can be kept alive indoors uh, inside a wall. Right, I think what, what you're talking about is to bring the trees uh, foremost. Uh, the only thing I can think of is trees like uh, um, Chinese elms, Buddhist monk pines, uh, ficus, uh, European wild olives, 
you can take them indoors uh, before it gets too cold and provided they haven't got the chill they will not lose their leaves and uh, they will lose some leaves but they will not lose all their leaves and uh, you can then bring them out when it gets really warm and uh, but before it gets cold you take them back in and once they get used to being indoors it's very risky to bring them out and leave them out because they, they start to stop being uh, sort of uh, winter hardy uh, they're not used to the cold and uh, uh, can get damaged quite easily. So uh, m my advice is either you keep them outdoor or you keep them indoors, but don't keep uh, changing. If you keep changing, uh, that's what causes problems. Uh, now, George Plexus, uh, oh, hi, uh, great uh, for you to join us. Why don't you, why you don't do a video for some various popular species which Seasons we do tasks like pruning, reporting, change shari to explain the task, and which period of year we do them. Yes, that's a very good uh, suggestion, George. Uh, I have actually been thinking that I will do that in live streams because videos are they are uh, clips are made and then they sit there in, in, in the files and until they are worked on. And by the time they're worked on, sometimes a few months go by. And I thought of uh, discussing in these live streams the work that we should be doing on our trees. And uh, also, uh, if it comes to it, do, a, do very short one or two minute videos on this particular task. Very good suggestion, uh, George. If you want to put this comment on... Uh, uh, on the on my uh, on my uh, channel trailer that's the latest upload uh, I will then pick it up from there and uh, and we'll do we'll, we'll run with it and we'll start doing doing uh, what what you've suggested uh, that's a very very good suggestion George thank you very much and if you have anything else please just uh, 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 put, uh, uh, put it in your comments and I will uh, try and sort of uh, deal with it now or or later if, if it's uh, a comment like the one that you just put. Now, Jeffrey, every bonsai owner has its favorite trees. What is your top three trees? Maybe you can show them in the next Q&A. Right, Jeffrey, it's very easy. The trees that are my favorite, they vary from time to time. It depends what time of the year it is. Uh, there are a number of videos and I've also started making uh, a growing goji berry trees as bonsai. They're very, very difficult to grow, but I'm having a go. It's a challenge. Nobody in the UK has goji berry trees. And I thought, well, I will have a go and see what happens. And there's a video where I'm showing uh, the goji berry trees two trees that I bought very cheaply for a few pounds from a local supermarket and then there are some I have grown from seeds and uh, uh, so that's where we are and uh, so the, the flowers on Guji Berry are very very pretty when they were in flower I just loved them and I again moved them to a location where I can see them and also enjoy the flowers after Guji Berry came uh, Fuji cherry, I've got quite a few of those, including some tiny ones. And again, uh, there are some videos made in the last couple of months. Uh, you can see these trees. And hot on the heels of uh, Fuji cherry are the uh, Chinese quince and Japanese quince. Again, I have quite a lot of these. They are absolutely stunning when they're in flower, and I love them. And I put them all next to each other in one, one location and again where I can see them uh, without having to look for them. And uh, so they were, uh, they've now finished flowering so they're not as clever so they've gone back to their pla places. And today I videoed uh, my big wisteria. That is in flower and I also uh, looked at some, uh, 
I live in an old Victorian house, and uh, the houses, uh, neighboring houses, are also Victorian. And uh, so I was looking at the houses, with, and, I, and I knew some houses have uh, wisteria at the front. And uh, I have sort of taken a few clips of the neighbors' houses with the wisteria on the front. And then I've also taken clips of my own big wisteria. And that right now is uh, my favorite. It looks absolutely stunning. Not all the flower buds have opened, but a fair amount are open and uh, it, it looks quite nice. And I was worried that if it rains, I may lose a lot of the petals. And so I, I thought I'd rather uh, video it with uh, all the sort of buds, flower buds not having opened as opposed to waiting for them to fully open and then finding, ah, the rain's beaten me to it and no video this year. So I've, got the, I've taken the precaution of doing that and uh, uh, I will see if this coming Saturday uh, or Sunday, if the rest of them have opened up, then I'll basically do an update and the whole thing will be published in one go. So I hope, Jeffrey, that answers your questions about the which trees are my favorite. And then... <coughs> Excuse me. There are some really tiny ones. These are again uh, maple, uh, Acer bergerum. They're, they're tiny ones, about uh, 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 maybe 10, 12 centimeters, and with beautiful shape. What I will try to do is uh, speed up the bringing in into the live stream, and I'll position them. Uh, I'll position them back there. Uh, now, where are we? Yeah, I'll position them back there, so where, where, where you can see them. And uh, uh, those also are my favorites when they are in leaf, because they're, they're tiny, the pots are very small, and they look stunning. And some more questions have come in, so let me have a look at that. Uh, Dennis, excellent discussion with uh, patients and knowledge. Right, okay, that's great. Dennis, my pleasure. Can you go passion fruit indoors. Now, passion fruit, uh, I, have, I have seen passion fruit uh, uh, being grown here in uh, uh, England, uh, but it's always outdoors. The only time you can grow them indoors is if you have uh, a conservatory or a greenhouse. Uh, but anything short of that, if you try to grow them in your kitchen, uh, I don't think they would survive, but I, having said that, I have seen some nurseries selling these uh, uh, passion fruit and the uh, wines are sort of uh, bound up in a circle and uh, they are meant to go indoors, but because they are wines and not, uh, uh, they're like a creeper plants, they are not bonsai trees, I have stayed away from them. Now, let's see. Hello, Mario Ramirez from Mexico. Good to have you in the house, buddy. How are you? Oh, my favorite trees to work in bonsai. Uh, I, Mario, I love working with trees. Uh, it doesn't really matter what sort of tree it is. As long as it's bonsai, I love working on it and that's how I got started. Uh, when I started I didn't have much knowledge, I had a lot of lessons and then I got a lot of cheap starter trees, a lot of collected materials and I just worked and worked and worked. Uh, uh, every Saturday and Sunday I'd be working 10-12 hours a day and I, I loved it. And then during weekdays I, uh, uh, I'd come home from work I'd be out in the garden in the summer till about 10 o'clock at night. And uh, I just love working on trees, taking something which is a mediocre looking and convert it in about three, four hours into something decent looking. Um, hello, 83. Nice to see you. I, I have seen you uh, around before and but your name escapes me. I apologize for that. Right, Dennis, how fast can one repot? 
after heavy pruning. Now, uh, are, are they two separate questions or is that one question? Uh, and also, which sort of uh, tree are we talking about? Uh, when you say how fast, are you talking about repotting process from start to finish? Uh, for small trees, I can do that in, in about uh, uh, half an hour, 25 minutes. For bigger trees, it can take, it is taken us as, as long as three hours, four hours, because we have to uh, painstakingly comb the roots out, and particularly where the tree hasn't been repotted for many, many years. Uh, in fact, a good, very good example is the big Arakawa maple, uh, which we repotted, putting, taking it out of a deep pot and repotting it into a very, very shallow Japanese style pot. And uh, uh, that took us many hours. And the video is, uh, uh, well, with editing, you can achieve uh, amazing results. So we show uh, the video is, uh, I can't quite remember, but I think the video is about 20 minutes long, but it took us the best part of the day to uh, painstakingly uh, comb the roots out and then we found roots as thick as uh, uh, three inches thick and they had to be uh, cut out with a saw. Uh, so that's uh, how uh, uh, fast or slow the reporting process takes uh, place. Now, after heavy pruning, uh, that is, I tend to repot first and then prune. Uh, but you seem to have done the pruning first, uh, but you can still repot it because the uh, it does need to be. You need to do the pruning and the repotting. Well, I tend to do the pruning and the repotting at the same time. So I'd repot first. Now, remember, we will remove anything between 30% to 50% of the roots. Uh, uh, normally, if the tree is being reported at normal intervals, then I would remove about 30%. But if the tree has been reported for a long time, then it can be as much as 50 or 60% of the roots are removed. And once the report is complete, we then work on the top to reduce the foliage so that it's not as demanding, the top of the tree doesn't put out so much demands on the roots of the tree. And again, uh, for sake of completeness, I keep them in complete shade for at least two to three weeks, giving the, uh, the tree a chance to recover from uh, such drastic surgery. It's no different to people going into hospital, having surgery and coming out and recuperating. So why should trees be any different? In fact, I have a section uh, in my garden uh, which is uh, a, complete, a complete shade and I, and I call that the, my intensive care unit for the bonsai trees. Any trees which are flesh, freshly reported, that's where I put them. And also, uh, from time to time, I, people bring their trees to me uh, the trees are suffering, overwatering, underwatering, or it, it's root bound, the tree hasn't been repotted, or it hasn't been fed properly, and that's where I place them to uh, give them a chance to recuperate. Uh, I hope that answers your question, Dennis. If not, if you could uh, repeat the, the, the question using different words so I can understand if your question is different. To the, to the answer I've given. Now, 83, can azaleas be air laid? Uh, azaleas actually, if you, if you, yes, they can. I haven't air laid, but what I tend to do is the cuttings that I take, I stick them into water and they tend to root. Or the other way uh, is uh, to uh, take the cuttings and uh, uh, put them in a uh, uh, take a bonsai pot or a training pot and fill it up with uh, compost and uh, a bit of uh, cumis or uh, a horticultural grit and stick the uh, uh, cuttings in, in, in the pot, water it thoroughly and then put it in a plastic bag and tie up the top. Not a black plastic bag but a white 
a supermarket a plastic bag and place it in a sunny location and check regularly to make sure that uh, there is uh, the soil is still wet and the inside will act as a uh, will become like a sauna a lot of humidity a lot of moisture and it speeds up the uh, rooting process and also uh, for good measure if you can dip the cut end into rooting hormone before you place it in the pot into the training pot in the uh, soil mixture that I've described uh, that should see the uh, uh, cuttings rooted within four to six weeks and before you uh, uh, place, place the cuttings in the soil remove all the new leaves all the le all the leaves actually and once you place it in the bag and you check regularly when you see new growth new leaves that's a sign that your cuttings have rooted and you can then take them out and place them in the sun uh, and uh, well i have quite a few of the cuttings which have rooted and i think what we will have to start doing is for you guys to send your questions in in advance so that i can at least have uh, it's like the cuttings that we are talking about i have quite a few cuttings i've got quince i have previts i have uh, pomegranates i have uh, uh, chinese elms i have uh, european wild olives these are the cuttings taken after i prune the trees and they have rooted and they are still in little pots so I could bring those in and I'll try to make a note somewhere of bringing these uh, cuttings in. Right, I've just made a note that I will bring these in and uh, share with you as to uh, what can be achieved. And uh, quite a few quinces which were rooted about three four years ago are in tiny little pots and they're very very pretty in fact one of the videos uh, about the quinces uh, I share with uh, the viewers the cuttings which I have which have been rooted and some of them had flowers and there's one which is a tiny 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 and it's about that size. Uh, uh, there's a terracotta pot about that size. And it's uh, like a thimble. And in it is a very, very thin cutting of the quince, which has rooted. And it had three leaves when I showed it, but no flowers, sadly. So that's what can be achieved. Right, Dennis, you have a question on privets. Uh, please do ask. Ah, okay, so you're happy with that. Good, that's great. Now, um, does anyone else have any questions? Because I, 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 ideally I wanted to keep this Q&A short, but uh, uh, we seem to be running to about an hour or so. And also, um, I would very much appreciate if you could give me the thumbs up and uh, also uh, if anyone amongst the viewers uh, watching this uh, and is participating in this and if you haven't yet subscribed please do or please consider subscribing that's that, that's better isn't it consider subscribing and uh, if you if you think that uh, you can learn from this channel then please subscribe also hit the bell and tick the box and save and you will receive notifications of all my uploads and also all my live streams and you won't miss anything and that's the commercial out of the way so let's get back to uh, uh, any other questions uh, Mario uh, thanks for the, uh, your answer just one more question do you have any experience with tamarind bonsai Wow Mario what a question Yes, I have experience. I've been, try I've been working with tamarind for the last 
three years. That's the good news. Now the bad news. I haven't had any success. Nada. Zero. Uh, I've tried to germinate the seeds and I buy the tamarind which is freshly imported from Thailand, the sweet tamarind, and so far I have failed miserably. As we speak, in my kitchen there is a new box of tamarind. I eat the fruit and then I try to germinate them. Uh, I would love to have uh, a few tamarind trees. And so far, Mario, I haven't succeeded. It's too cold here. I know uh, countries like India, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Thailand, you just throw the seeds out, cover them up with a bit of dirt, and within four weeks, they are about 15, 20 centimeters. But in the UK, we have tried many, many things, and so far, nothing has worked. And uh, I, Mario, uh, I have you had any success with uh, tamarind? Just pop in. Uh, just l let me know uh, if you have had any success because that's, and I don't give up. I am persistent, and I will find a way to fix this issue. And we will have tamarind trees which eventually be, be made into bonsai. It does take a long time if you grow from seeds. But uh, we don't have an option. We can't collect because they don't grow um, uh, in, in cold climate. So they have to be kept uh, in conservatory or uh, uh, I have a room uh, where it's temperature controlled and there's plenty of natural light. And uh, I keep a lot of plants in there over winter months, uh, including my mango mango trees. Right, let, I'm going to have a look at my other computer, which is over over here, to uh, uh, check out the. It's like a mirror; it's pointing the wrong. Right, it's that way. So I'm going to have a look at the computer to see the comments. Uh, Right, Thomas, that's great. Thank you very much, and uh, we'll catch up. Oh, hello. Look who's in, the, who is in the house. Elizabeth. Delighted you could join us. And uh, put through any questions you have, Elizabeth, but I'm sure um, you have plenty of experience, and, uh, but you never know. Uh, if there is anything, I'll be delighted to uh, take it. Alan, um, right, if all your needles, Alan, it worries me, if all your needles have turned yellow. Alan, what about the watering? Uh, the pines don't need watering very often, Alan, and I'm... Um, can you tell me a little bit about the watering regime? Because the pines need, they grow, uh, their natural habitat is on the mountains in Japan. And it rains heavily and they get all the water they need. And then they have, a, uh, uh, they go through a, a spell where there's no water, everything dries up. And then uh, it rains and so that's the cycle. So when they are bonsais, we have to treat them the same way. And watering, um, the best way I can explain is that if you have any, one or two weeds growing in the pot, leave them there, and after you water it, uh, the weeds will be up, and uh, it'll be time to water when the weeds are wilting. That's the best way I can explain the watering regime for the uh, white pines. Something is not right. Uh, you could be, uh, under, you could be overwatering. I think it's overwatering. Right, Elizabeth. It's a pleasure to have you. But do feel free to uh, contribute if uh, if you can. 
and feel free to answer <laughs> if if someone asks a question and I haven't got 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 round to it. Feel free to uh, uh, contribute to 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 that answer. Uh, fortunately, it's, it, there are not too many people, but one when it gets very busy, that that can happen. Uh, right and. Does that answer your question, Alan? Uh, I suspect you are overwatering it uh, because under watering you wouldn't have this problem. Uh, they are used to getting um, dry in between watering. So I suspect uh, you are watering it more than it needs. And uh, If I have all water watered, can I save them? That's Alan's question. Uh, yes, Alan, you can. Uh, what you do is uh, also uh, can you just quickly put a note? Where are you keeping? Where are you keeping this uh, white pine? What's the location? How much sun is it getting? Can you just uh, uh, put a note? Put, put a comment in the comments. Put uh, where, uh, the location. How much sun is getting? That would be useful for me to know uh, before we continue with this, before, uh, uh, and then I can answer uh, properly as to what needs to happen. They can be saved. It, it, it's not dead as long as the tree, your white pine, is not dead. Yes, it can be saved. You can turn it round, and it would it would look like uh, as if it's got mange uh, for for at least a year or so, and it will recover. It uh, Great, it does need to be in full sun, so at least your location is correct. So what I suggest is that you uh, reduce the watering and if there are any weeds, leave at least uh, two or three weeds uh, and when the weeds start to wilt, that's the time when you water it. The other way you can do it is, uh, I have done this, there is, in fact, there is a video on have a look at the video on my channel about uh, Japanese white pine and uh, there's a watering problem and what this guy was doing he was over watering it and uh, the surface of the pot was covered in uh, polyps it's like uh, um, spheres uh, of water uh, round, roundish, and uh, uh, I can't quite remember the name, but I looked into it and uh, basically it was a case of overwatering. and what I did uh, for him was uh, uh, he brought the tree in and I removed a couple of inches of the top soil and I replaced it. It was quite a, it was quite a deep pot, it's about that deep, and I removed a couple of inches of the top soil and I replaced it with fine grade akadama and the trick was to, when you water it the akadama turns chocolate brown and when the top layer starts to dry it turns sandy color and my advice to the guy was that when you water it the uh, fine grade akadama will be chocolate color and, and I showed him the dry one. When it starts to dry out, it'll become sandy color, and that's what the dry one looks like. And that's the indication that it needs watering. Now, this is someone who knows nothing about bonsai. He doesn't care, uh, but uh, he, he spent a lot of money uh, on, on this tree. It was a gift for his wife. And all he wanted to know was, a simple method where he could water it without having to learn about the detailed uh, ways of uh, uh, how do I know when it's uh, time to water and I found the solution is there's nothing clever about it it was just I just had a little thought I said right uh, this is what happens with fine grade Akadama and that's what I will do and that's what I did so there is a video uh, Alan on my channel uh, which basically shows from start when the tree arrived the polyps that I've described all watering and uh, but he was quick he brought it to me fairly quickly 
Um, as soon as a problem happened, he realized something was wrong, sent me the photos, I did the research, and he's a scientist. When I told, gave him the uh, biological name for these spheres, and, uh, and I also explained that they would not cause any harm to the tree. Uh, and his response was, he knew exactly what I was talking about. I didn't know what, what, what this stuff was, and, but he did. I mean, once I named it, he knew what, what it was and he brought the tree in and I'm happy to say that uh, we've sorted it. And I haven't heard from him and that was, I don't know, about 18 months ago, 15 to 18 months ago. So there's a video. Alan, do check it out. And if you can do, if you can remove uh, top one inch of the top soil and get yourself some very fine grain akadama and put that as a top layer and water it and it'll go chocolate brown. And when that starts to turn sandy color, that's when you know it's time to water it again. It's a foolproof way. I wish I had a solution like this for all the species, but unfortunately not. Uh, I have solutions for a few species, but not everyone. All the trees are different and they require a different amount of water. Jade is another funny one. Uh, uh, it's uh, People either get it or they don't. And uh, the watering of jade is uh, very similar to the Japanese white pine. Now, let's see. Uh, I've got a few more comments coming in. Uh, Mario uh, Ramirez. Yes, uh, I have a tamarind from seed since seven years ago. Just pruned and shaped, but never be reported. Thanks. That's great, Mario. I'm so pleased. I will. And is there a video of your tamarind tree on your channel? Uh, you have a channel. I am subscribed to, you, to, to your channel, but I, I, I don't recollect seeing it. So if you could uh, pop in a comment, uh, if it is, I'll uh, uh, have a look at your channel and see how your tamarind tree is doing. And uh, it'll take me a long time to catch up. You're seven years ahead of me there, Mario. Right, folks, unless there is anything else, uh, I think I'm going to wrap up this uh, uh, Q&A. And uh, I hope to repeat. Uh, what, what I would like to do is, if, if you have any questions, if you can send them in, then I can, if I, it's like the cuttings. Uh, if I, had I known that, I would have had the cuttings which have uh, rooted and uh, uh, the cuttings are doing very well. There's a lot of new growth. And some of the cuttings have been uh, uh, repotted in tiny little, uh, tiny little uh, uh, bonsai pots. And uh, the quinces have flowered the, uh, uh, the, and now they're having little uh, sort of, uh, tiny, tiny quinces which will grow. And uh, uh, so had I known that, I would have brought those cu cuttings in with me and uh, shown them on camera to show you the results you can achieve. And again, these are free. When you prune the trees, a lot of people throw them away. And well, I throw away a lot of my uh, uh, pruned cuttings, but some of them that look uh, decent, I propagate them and uh, they become little trees. Right, let's have another quick look to see. Uh... Right, 83, thank you very much for joining. Good night and we'll catch up soon. God bless. Right, folks, um, I'm going to uh, start wrapping it up. Uh, it's getting late and uh, I still have some editing to do uh, on the next video, which uh, now I'm just trying to think, what is it? I've got a complete blank. I was working on it earlier. and uh, But this, this video that I've got to edit uh, for YouTube and I really should uh, say uh, thank you very much uh, to you all for joining. And if you have any questions, uh, my email details are uh, in the uh, description section of every video, you can uh, email me and I will, uh, uh, if I have an example or a tree 
or something related to your question, I'll bring it into uh, my, my uh, study and share it with you. Uh, thank you very much for joining and with that I will bid you all a very good evening and uh, see you again in the next uh, live stream and uh, another uh, subscriber's uh, question and answer. Elizabeth, my pleasure and I uh, hope to see you all again soon. Thank you very much and good night and bye for now.